Yes, my people, good day. How are you feeling today? We have a big job ahead of us. We are removing the differential from this E46 M3. I start by removing the exhaust. You have to take the exhaust down because we have to access the drive shaft. But you know these bolts are always under here exposed to the elements, to the dirt and the grime and all that stuff. One thing with BMW though, they usually have, I don't know what kind of metal they use, stainless or what, but their fasteners for their exhaust systems usually don't just corrode into a rust ball like some domestic vehicles and some other manufacturers. They usually, you spray them down real nice and they come off real nice. This plastic cover is in the way, so I'm removing that. One thing with me, and I keep on saying it throughout my videos, if I don't have to take something off, I am not removing it. So I will, I find myself trying to work around stuff and then when I see I can't work around it, then I'll take it off. I am not in the process of just taking everything off because it might be close or it might be touching. Man, let's try to shift things out the way a little bit or, or wiggle around it a little bit. You'll be surprised. Instead of having... 30 items on the floor when you're done to reassemble you only have maybe 15 you understand and it it, it adds up the difference between finishing at 415 or finishing at 610 you understand what i mean it's time to go it's time to go what i'm doing here is putting the nut and bolts back together when i remove fasteners if it's a nut and a bolt i put them back together thread them back together and put them to the side this way it helps when it's time to reassemble the vehicle you know that okay okay this is a nut and bolt assembly for the exhaust and kind of jogs your memory when you're putting it back together reassembling it every little 10 seconds 20 seconds that you save on a big job turns into an hour hour and a half two hours sometimes at the end of the day so these simple little tricks to speed up your reassembly process it is definitely worth picking it up you can do that or you can use like an organizer and you put your bolts and stuff in there to me the organizer works awesome it's a little bulky though sometimes you end up kicking it or bumping it 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 it, it, it works I'm not, I'm not gonna knock it it works in certain situations it works. like if i'm under the hood and i can set it down somewhere and i'm right there in the reach but because i'm under the car here and there's not really somewhere solid for it to be where i won't knock it over or have to be stooping down to put stuff in i just do it this way and just put the nuts and bolts on the the lift arm and handle and it works out great for me i have this bad habit of hitting stuff with my hand that i should be hitting with a rubber mallet or a hammer so it is a good practice to always reach for one of those instead of you know damaging the tendons and stuff in your hand so i am getting better i am improving so just work with me we are almost at the spot now to take the exhaust system down i am just removing those two tie bars that are under there and there is a cross brace going from the body to the base of the rear subframe so that's it that i'm removing right there so three bolts one on each side and then one in the center fortunately the exhaust system on these cars are not very heavy they are long they are kind of bulky but they're not too heavy so just balance it balance the weight and you can do it. it's a one-man show but you can make it happen just balance it real nice and just set it down nice and careful after this now it's time to remove the heat shield so you have the exhaust system then you have the heat shield and then you can get to the drive shaft that is how all these European cars set up. It's not too difficult to take down. Just a couple of bolts, like 8mm bolts. And it just comes down and out the way. It has no weight to it whatsoever. It just really lights like foil paper. So here we are. We can actually now see the drive shaft. We support the transmission with a pole jack. Remove the bolts for the transmission mounts, the cross brace. And then remove the brace entirely by taking the bolts off the mounts. And that way we can access the guibo bushing bolts a lot easier a lot more accessible there are six bolts three bolting the bushing to the drive shaft and then three bolting the bushing to the transmission the guibo is made from flexible synthetic rubber and is designed to allow some angular and axial misalignment while reducing driveline vibration in mechanical power transmission applications so in other words it coupled the transmission to the drive shaft, allow it to work without you feeling all the vibrations that take place from operation. <laughs> you understand? Simplification is the key. We are now at the opposite end of the drive shaft where it bolts to the differential. 
they use a different form of attachment here it's a different kind of joint it is still a universal joint but just a different type and it uses these inverted torques to attach the drive shaft to the differential now uh these wrenches here are not easy to find but you will need a set of these yes you can use the sockets on there but sometimes the bolts are so close to that inner portion of the joint right there that they don't see it flush or if they do go up there they kind of dent it so i break it loose first with these little wrenches and they work nice and then i use my ratchet just to zip them on out of there zip all of them out of there and just put it to the side one thing i forgot to mention was that before you start doing any kind of drive line drive shaft work you know you're taking the drive shaft off if it's an automatic make sure that it is in neutral and even if it's a manual make sure just make sure that it is in neutral because you will need to rotate the drive shaft to get to all of these bolts and stuff and one thing i use to hold the drive shaft in place or prevent it from turning when i'm under the car is i'll probably take a wheel off and then through the vented disc rotor i put a screwdriver between one of the vents and the brake caliper so when it rotates it stops and then i'll be able to pull on it and pull the bolts or i'll use like a screwdriver if it is a two-piece drive shaft it has a, another u-joint in the middle just just go across the middle of it and that's kind of cross it so i got my left hand holding it firm and then my right hand pulling and breaking it loose so here we are we are getting closer and closer to where we need to be we are seeing the drive shaft by itself here here you see me using the process of the screwdriver in the vents of the brake rotor to rotate the wheel which in turn rotates the axle so i can get to the position of a new bolt so i can break it loose and i leave the screwdriver in there wedged in there between the vents in the rotor and the caliper and i'm able to pull on it works flawless you know what i mean you're, you're probably doing that already but i'm just saying it works flawless instead of having somebody having to put their foot on the brake put their foot on the brake hold it mm -mm. you have to get it done it is not a straightforward process to just remove these fasteners i have to be repositioning the wrench i have to flip the wrench 180 degrees and or i have to um go from a different angle sometimes it is it 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 it, it, it is these are not the simplest fasteners to undo just does let me say that you know what i mean some 10 millimeters or you know what i mean 13s or 15s would have been zipped off a long time ago but it is what it is it, it it's just is what it is now this is the rear sway bar that i am removing the sway bar bushing bracket bolts that's a mouthful so just loosen up the bolts and we're going to remove the sway bar out the way because if you notice it is right below the axle and the axle might need to shift down some and it is also right behind the differential holding it in so there's no way we're going to get the differential back and down and out with that in place so we're just removing that it's not too difficult you have the two brackets on each side and then you have two attachment points going to the control arms that you see me getting to there at that point there is this is a nut and bolt assembly again anytime it's nut and bolt assemblies it's always a little bit clunkier to get to because you have to get a wrench on one and a socket on the other and then sometimes there's just not enough room like you see me taking it off there and flicking the nut away i don't even know where that nut is i haven't found it yet so i may have to go to the 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 the, the, the bolt bin to replace that because that thing flicked out of there when it came loose it never fails believe me let me tell you and then also bmw doesn't give you a ton of room to work on these things so when you do get it loose you start wondering is this the right way to get it <laughs> you have to kind of wedge it out of there so when you wedge it out always remember that you're gonna possibly need to wedge it back in when it is time to go back in so just make a mental note so we get it out of there so all right we're cooking with grease now now i am removing the bolts for the rear mounts for the differential there's one on each side but this thing is slam worn out you notice when i was pulling the bolts for the differential for the drive shaft you notice that the whole complete differential was moving 
that is what was happening when he was going down the road so we're fixing that so we take them two bolts out now and then there will be one more bolt in the front of the differential on the passenger side that needs to be removed and once we do that those three points right there once we do that it is time now to figure out how we're going to shimmy this thing out of its home so i got my transmission jack there supporting it and then you notice it's tedious time again using the wrench on this fastener because the space between where the fastener is and then that hump that's in the trunk you can't really get the ratchet and the socket in there because when you start undoing it it starts pushing the ratchet socket assembly into that metal piece so even if you did get it loose it's a long bolt you're not going to be able to get that whole thing out of there so you just crack it loose and then you just just tedious city these are the remains of the bushing that once was in that rear cover there that's what it looks like so what i did there i just supported the weight of the differential with the transmission jack and then it made it a little bit smoother then also i'll be able to get it out by by finger but this one on that side on the driver's side that one seemed like it had loctite on it or something so it was it was kind of tight almost all the way out technicians know what i'm talking about you just there just finger working just finger work just fingering it just fingering it and it's just taking forever but what you're gonna do there ain't nothing to do but just to keep on turning it turning it turning it turning it and eventually it it, it will come out this is where the the final bolt the final attachment point of the rear differential is it's on the passenger side front of it and i removed it with my trusty milwaukee for the win so now there is nothing holding this differential in place technically so i am putting on a little safety strap there because we don't want anything to you know the, 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 this is how it is it will be up in there, jammed in there. It won't want to come out when you have all your safety stuff in place. But as soon as or if you forgot to put a strap on or something, <laughs> strap on, or something, it will just fall right to the ground as if it, it, it wasn't binding two seconds ago. So always remember to install, not strap on, but always remember to put the safety strap on your transmissions if you're taking them out or this differential or whatever you're going to be having on the top of the jack make sure you strap it safely in place you reduce the possibility of any kind of mishaps so that's what i'm doing here i am lowering it down and then i am using a pry bar trying to shimmy it back a little bit and then i'm lowering down trying to shimmy it back a little bit but it's binding and i'm trying to figure out why is it binding why this thing don't want to just come out but as I shimmy it and lower it, shimmy it and lower it, I realized that the strap that I had on there was a little bit too tight. So I had to release some of the tension off the strap to give it a little bit more slack. And when I released the tension off the strap to give it a little bit more slack, I was able now to get it to come down a little bit further. And then I went to the front and then pried it back some. And then I was able to loosen the strap up a little bit more and then come down a little bit further. And closer inspection, you'll see that there is not much room between the back of the transmission and that hump where the spare tire would have went. So when I come back with it, it is touching and it's touching and it's binding. I had to loosen the strap up a little bit more to be able to get it out of there. Now, this is the scary part. It The, the strap is on there but it's not really on there because it's so loose but just to get this part out of there it has to pivot on top of the transmission jack you see that you see how precarious it is but it's not it 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 won't come out any other way so you have to kind of loosen it up tilt it pull it back and then it falls down and then afterwards i tighten the strap back up because if anything can happen it will happen so there it is we drop it down that is what it looks like. Now we just have a cavity where it once was. And that is the rear differential out of a E46 M3. And it took a little bit of a while. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bless. Yeah. And don't forget to go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. 